Well, can you join us on a rather rainy afternoon here in London? Well, I'm amazed at the turnout here. And pretty much on time as well, welcome viewers. This is the site of a previous This is Islington Survivors of Abuse in Children's Homes Vigil. We're at at the moment. Such a lot of white balloons. Such a lot of flowers. This is remembering those that our government, our state, has let down so terribly. Is that a famous man? Are you famous? <laughs> I'm broadcasting for Occupy News Network. Are you? Are you? Yes. Oh, what? Now? Yes, now. Oh. Occupy News Network is going out live on the internet to the world. Oh. This house was abused. I can't believe it's a children's house. Yes, yes, I know. So I used to live in there and they've all got mental health problems now. Yeah. And they're all like far away. It's like they're all hidden in free and Barney hospital. And we need to get them out for some testimonies. Yeah, yeah, we need there. to get yeah. we need to get the guilty to face the music yeah. now. We need to get them uh, if they abuse children and done the wrong thing then they have to pay the consequences. They can't yeah. go around doing things like that and destroying innocent people's lives. No, absolutely not. No way. No amount of power, no amount of money, no amount of influence no, should save them from this. We put, everyone puts them there because they, they, really, they can trust them. But how yeah. can you trust now? Yeah. Who did it belong to? Who does this place belong to? Was it is it in council? I suppose so. I, I, I don't know. I'm just here to film it. Oh, no. Are you Looks like so we've got the press here this time, unlike uh, the own guest housing, where I was the only press at all. Sorry. Such a lot of people here, such a lot of people care. Even the police have turned up. Yes, the Occupy News Network. Um, I'll give you my card in a bit and you can watch it all. Spread the word that this is going on. I know we're competing with Stop the War. If you don't mind me saying, the view behind your umbrella is not. Okay, let's, uh, let's try and. Uh, I need to protect the camera though, it won't work anymore. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay, we've we'll just, we'll just got to wait for yeah. about five minutes before um, ITN to turn up, is that alright? Yeah, yeah. So, I can't just, uh, really hear you. Okay, come on, come on. If we can, we're just waiting for ITN on. to turn up, apparently. No, so, no unlike problem. last time, yes, unlike last time, we actually have some media attention. I'll be redundant soon. <laughs> At this rate. Let's get my battery pack. Hello. Uh, so we're just going to start um, the ITM interview going on. Which, sorry, we're going to start anyway, but it's good for we're getting some publicity for what we're doing here. Welcome everybody. Wow! In this weather. In this weather, it's really good to be able to today. But I think for some of us, it's such an important issue. Um, um, I'm Andrea Renisu and I'm involved in helping facilitate all this and one of the reasons is not only as you know this issue child abuse affects my friends my family but also it affects our communities doesn't it yeah. and we all live in communities so that's why we're here that's why we're speaking out 
and the government at the moment are just doing nothing. They're um, putting up, you know, Tim Park kind of inquiries, inquiries um, led by their people. I mean, yeah. So I think we need to speak out about that as well. Who should be leading those inquiries? Because I think it needs a much more independent voice. It needs a much more in, um, experienced voice. Somebody like Michael Mansfield, who you know, has the history of doing stuff like this, but it's not implicated in anything that's gone on through friends, family or whatever. But, so, we decided as a group that one of the things we wanted to do was have a series of vigils in areas that were significant. Oh. <laughs> that were in, that, in areas that were... Uh, <laughs> oh, very good. Okay, I know, I know, we will, we will. We'll get away with it. I mean, what they're going to say. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's about speaking out ourselves. It's about paying tribute to what we've known that we've been affected by this issue. But I think it's about looking forward and just saying, we will not have this. And we want this investigation. And we want to see what happens. Because it's not going to be easy. 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 It's ITM bit. <laughs> uh, this is um, someone, a whistleblower who will talk about her experiences. Peter! 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 Give somebody else the brawly. Do I just stay here? You can't be able to turn him off. Yeah, yeah, yes. No, don't look at me, it's not a pretty sight. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, Peter, you're a survivor. You're also somebody who's in, engaged with this issue on a day to day basis and helping support people. You explain what you do. But yeah. Uh, my, my name is Pete Saunders. I, I work. And I, I run a charity called NAPAC. We support adults who are abused in childhood. Um, I know many of you here, so sorry you've heard this before. And we have never been busier at the charity than we are at the moment with people coming forward. And the other thing we've noticed recently with our calls, we have a free phone helpline for survivors, is the intensity and the pain seems to be increasing, if anything, the, the intensity of the calls. Yes. And I think a lot of that is to do with the fact that people are now speaking out, the media have picked it up, and I think, I think Andrew is right, I think in a sense we've got to get the government on the run. Yeah. Because yep. as a charity, we cannot be involved with politics, strictly speaking, and we want to leave politics out of it if we can, but when the government, the government is actively giving the two fingers, to survivors and victims, which I think is what's happening with this watered-down inquiry that's been that's been announced, with once again somebody being put in charge who I've no doubt as a person is a, is, a, is a fine individual, but it's putting a corporate lawyer in charge of such an important criminal investigation into one of the most serious aspects of things going wrong in our society. To me, that is a bit like putting two fingers up. It's a bit like, and I've said this before. <laughs> It's a bit like putting a pastry cook in charge of brain surgery. It's not appropriate. And the government have to accept that. I don't think that they will. And I think that is a shame. They have but, to. I, but but I think yeah, I think I think we're in they do have to, but I think we're in a war. We're not we're not in a battle here. We are in a war and we are picking our battles and we are winning them. And today is an important battle and, and thanks to the police for coming along and ensuring our safety. I think it's good to acknowledge the police. Thank you. Um, I think it's always polite to, 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 to do that because they, they can be very helpful or otherwise. <laughs> good, good. As indeed are most police. You know, as, as it, indeed, and as are most people in society. But society, and again I've said it many times before, society still prefers to look the other way. They still prefer to keep this issue swept under the carpet. It's easier to send a million pounds to a dog's home than it is to support adult survivors of childhood abuse. And I think we've got a lot of work to do. To do. So I just, I mean, along with everybody who's organised today, I thank them for doing this because it takes a lot of work, believe me. So thank you for doing that. Never, ever, ever give up. Never, ever give up because what is at stake here what is at stake is actually the future protection of our children. We cannot undo, we cannot undo what was done to us, but we can do so much more to ensure that what happened to us does not happen to children in the future. And that's one of the contributions that survivors everywhere are now making to this debate, is to speak out and to keep speaking out. I met with, I met with 
Jeremy Hunt a few weeks ago, who obviously isn't the most isn't the most popular person in the health service at the moment, but he gave us the time of day. I told him that survivors all across the country need support, and he seemed to understand that. And we've got further meetings coming with the Department of Health. I think that's a significant step in the right direction. I hope it's not a cynical move with a general election on the horizon, but he genuinely seemed to get it. What we need is other members of the government to get it as well, and to ask Fiona Wolf to do the honourable thing, to step down and to appoint somebody who will have the credibility and the backing and, I don't know, the seriousness, if you like, to undertake such an investigation, which we have to, we have to do. And we know why they've appointed Fiona Wall. We know why they've done that, because she would be seen as someone who, again, I've said it before, will produce a wonderful investigation, beautifully presented and a beautiful presented whitewash and we cannot yeah. accept that again so she has to go and we have to have somebody that we can all trust to do a proper investigation because this is extremely serious and to put somebody like that in charge is like asking me to fly a jumbo jet across the Atlantic I could walk to the plane looking very very confident but I believe me I wouldn't be able to get it off the ground so you know keep up the pressure Thanks for coming today. This is an incredibly good turnout given this weather and never ever give up. And as always, NAPAC needs volunteers. So get in touch with me if you want to come and help our charity to help other survivors. And thanks for coming today very Yay! much. Absolutely. They will Absolutely. great turnout on such a great day. What they want to protect some of their friends, Andrea. Yeah. That's, that's, that's establishment and this yeah. is how they protect themselves. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So when they're protecting their own country. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 couldn't see find the time to do it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think she'd probably consider yeah. all a bunch of damaged individuals from what I know about Margaret Hogg. Uh, on the child abuse issue for a long, yeah. long time. Yeah, exactly. She's kind of blown the whistle on so many different things. But I just, yeah, I'm not okay. Story, but, yeah. All right, well, I'm here today to talk about this building because that's why we're here in this place, 114 Grosvenor Avenue, which was a children's home, one of the 12 children's homes in Islington, and there was abusers in every single one of them. This one is a specific note. It was managed by someone called Dave Burridge, it was the deputy manager was a man called Nicholas John Rabbe and he um, when I was in Islington in 91 a very brave whistleblowing uh, member of staff here came to see me and said that he'd had a phone call from Cambridge police and they'd said that they had done a raid and they had found numerous images of a boy from this home and the, the rabbi they got letters from rabbi and um, so rabbi was implicated in the images and linked with some of the abusers from cambridge and this neville mighty who went on you know they he was arrested he was criticized um he was prevented from working with children but he stuck it through he got his right to work back again and so on but amazing man very very brave man and um so he he uh he said that this was a complete cover-up and nothing was being done to investigate it. And the DCI in charge of that in later years said that the investigation was closed down. The main perpetrator from Cambridge actually committed suicide. And then Nicholas Rabbe had a mansion house in Sussex which was run as a children's activity centre. Children were taken from this house in groups to to this activity centre that we you know plenty of procedures would not have allowed that but that didn't seem to matter a very wonderful woman called ivy i remember very well came to see me and said that she had reported this and got nowhere she was then sacked and she ended up going abroad there's been a lot of brave people along the way who tried to do something and what went on in that activity centre, who knows, they had go-karts and all sorts of things, but it obviously was a front. Then later, Sussex Police investigated that uh, rabbi and that centre and approached Islington Council for assistance. I'd left by then and I was asked by Scotland Yard to assist the Sussex Police because they were having difficulty getting cooperation from Islington. So I did that, I met with them, they were very good police, they were doing their best, but they couldn't proceed to any kind of prosecution. In 95, Nicholas Rabbe went to Thailand 
where he had a whale at a time, of course, in Pattaya with Bernie Baines, who was the manager of Elwood Street Children's Home, which was where he was a torturer and a sexual abuser of children. And he joined Rabe in Thailand. He committed suicide and, and then Nick Rabe committed suicide after being arrested and charged by the Thai police for abuse of 30 children, but known to have been in contact with over 300. So they, it was thanks to the Thai police in the end that there was a prosecution because it never happened in the UK because it was shut down at every level. And we want to know who were the children in this home? Where are they now? What did they go through? and we'd like to hear from them because we want to help them get justice and we want to help them get healing. This building is going to be uh, redeveloped into posh flats, right? And what we want to do is get access by the council to the building so we can hold the hands of the, the, the children, now adults, the adult survivors who would live there and talk them through the building and help them to heal and get some memories of what happened. Uh, there is an awful difficulty you know with the trauma the effect of trauma is so severe in these victims that they need help we're working with fragments of information files have gone missing they they most of them haven't got any files those that have like richard who you may have seen put out his postcards from jersey on, on online recently he sent his father some postcards from jersey when he was seven he was sent from here to jersey to odela garen children's home which was the scene of much torture as i'm sure you know so there was trafficking between jersey and this home nick rabbe took children to jersey so you know i've spoken to jersey survivors who and they talked to me about coming here so, you know, there was definitely movement between the two, but nobody's ever investigated that. And until we had these precious postcards, thanks to Richard's father, we didn't actually have proof, any proof uh, in that kind of, you know, evidential way that these children actually went to Jersey, though we'd heard about it. So they can't deny it now. They absolutely can't deny it. And there must be a police investigation by an independent police uh, separate from Islington to look into investigating what happened here um, and uh, so I'm, I'm speaking for the, the boy here who's called Shane in the Evening Standard who um, you know was the one that linked with Cambridge and we know he was severely abused uh, by a, it was a huge network it was a huge network every aspect of this everybody we know about was linked with a huge network and then I'm also speaking for Richard but I'm also speaking for a boy called Liam who was uh, came out in the open in the Evening Standard when Margaret Hodge was made Minister for Children very very brave young man and he was also in this home and he was taken by Nick Rabbe to New Barn School a New Barn School in Gloucestershire uh, where Peter Wrighton, who some of you may have heard of, was the governor of that school. So we knew Liam was the, the, the link uh, between here, Islington, and this home, and what went on in New Barn School, and the whole ring that involved Peter Wrighton. I won't say any more about that because the police are currently investigating that whole part of uh, all these, these abuse uh, networks. So um, it's really important today that we get at, we get some access to this building, that we get an independent police investigation, um, but also we need to set up some kind of charity, I don't know if anyone here is willing to help, which will help survivors regain their forgotten childhoods or their stolen childhoods, because we're working from just <coughs> small fragments of information and we have to start putting that together in order to be able to see them through to healing. So we need something like the Child Migrants Trust that's set up with the children that were sent to Australia. We, you know, that's a good model of practice. And we need to set up a charity that has people working for it that uh, victims can go to to start that healing process. Thank you. Thank you. That's work to be done, isn't that? <laughs> it's not about symbolism. Symbolism is important. And this is a symbol that is um, past where we were a few weeks ago, but we've just got to be doing things for the future. Is he in Paiso? Yeah. Yeah, we're not really with We had a statement to be ready. I can't repeat it again. All right. Uh, this is uh, hi. I'm Brian. I'm actually one of the people involved in organising this event. Sorry. I'm Brian. I'm one of the people involved in helping organise the event. I've got a message here from Peter McKelvey. For those of you who do not know, 
He was actually a child protection manager in Hereford and Worcestershire and was involved uh, actually with uh, NES and in fact me from an adult authority in trying to investigate networks of abuse that involved Peter Wrighton. Uh, he was the person also that took the information because his team and the investigation he was involved in were shut down by the social service department and by the police. So he couldn't actually progress the situation. But he later took the information to Tom Watson MP and it was that information that in fact what sparked off the Prime Minister's questions that has led to the whole debate around a national inquiry and uh, setting up of a national inquiry. So I'm going to read this uh, from him. Um, he, he said, I, I very much regret not being able to be at today's vigil. I would have liked to have paid my respects to all the children who never made it to adulthood and give my support to all the survivors of child sexual abuse in Islington who suffered at the hands of those who should have been protecting them while they were in local authority care. I would like to pay tribute to the social workers in the early 90s who tried everything they could to expose the full horror of the true extent of abuse throughout Islington's entire residential homes network. I still hold out hope that the survivors of this abuse will get justice and that the perpetrators who have, who have never been investigated will be pursued this time around. A full and truly independent inquiry is needed in Islington alone. It is obvious that senior managers and councillors were fully and properly informed of the allegations and it is equally obvious that many of them chose not to believe them or for a number of reasons try to block the disclosure of what was really happening to the most vulnerable children in the borough. It is now becoming obvious that alongside the abuse of children in the care of Islington Council, Islington itself as an area had from the late 60s onwards and right through the 70s and late 80s, early 90s, become the epicentre of one of the most sinister, powerful and well-connected paedophile networks that this country has ever seen, the Paedophile Information Exchange. Many leading figures from Pi based themselves in Islington at one time or another and used their connections to not only infiltrate and abuse within children's homes but also many children in the local community. I trust that this is just the beginning of the fight for justice for Islington survivors. They must not be denied in the way they were during the previous inquiry that is the White Report now recognised by many as the whitewash reports. Mm -hmm. Survivors must not tolerate another whitewash. Well done. Yay. Well done. So hopefully this won't just be the Sunday Times and 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 Sunday um, hello, my name is Charlotte, but I'm actually reading a message here from Eileen Fairweather, a journalist who I'm sure you're not aware of her name. She's worked tirelessly since 1992, um, Evening Standard broke um, the Islington stories. stories, sorry. Um, Eileen says, I have thought of something that I would like to say or have said. I think it would be empowering and comforting for survivors to know that there were adults who cared for and stood up for them, or tried to. I would like the victimised good whistleblower staff thank. For example, Ivy Gale, who worked at 114 and was sacked after raising her concerns about the children taken away for weekends by Rabbit, and of course Neville Mighty, who was not just sacked but framed, and was himself maliciously and palpably falsely accused by management of inappropriate behaviour. While the real perpetrators were free to rape children, an innocent man was hounded for allegedly stroking a girl's knee, which she herself denied to the standard that he ever did. He had only, she admitted, ever been caring and protected and always gone the further mile to help the children here. It took him seven years to prove his innocence and be cleared again to practice as a social worker, but the managers who framed him and ignored the plight of the children in this building have never been questioned or brought to justice. There were others who took great risks to try to get out the truth who still can't be named, both social services and police officers, specifically about this awful home and the cruel men in charge. One former detective constable, Peter Cook, of Cambridgeshire Police, who investigated the powerful people ring that led to this building, was also barred from investigating further and forcibly shut up. 
He bravely, he bravely blew the whistle for the standard and finally went on the record about this in 2008. The ring that he identified has still not properly been investigated either. And of course, Liz Davis, who worked tirelessly behind the scenes to encourage all the other whistleblowers and liaise with the media. It may seem now as if Liz has been out since the start, but no, she did not reveal her identity until 2003, when outraged at the appointment of Margaret Hodge as Britain's first ch children's minister, she finally spoke up publicly. Others who risked their careers and safety to secretly help the children here now will be retired. Now, of course, we hope that they too will dare to come forward and finally be heard. The children were less alone than they felt and feared, but even the adults who genuinely cared for them and fought for them were sadly sidelined, sacked, threatened and silenced. But now, at last, we can all come together and be heard. I have written this from the heart. Amen. Love, Eileen. Amen. 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 Can I just say that Eileen Fairweather was the reporter from the Evening Standard who exposed the Islington scandal, the abuse scandal. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to call out with some other um, officers. But what I would say is, anybody who wants to say anything, and you don't have to give your name or whatever, if you've got anything to say on this issue, then just raise your hand so that you know, we were all voices heard. So I'm going to introduce Alison as a solicitor. That's right. And there's the word solicitor. <coughs> Hello, I'm Ali Miller. I'm a locally based solicitor here in Islington and a partner with a firm called Lee Day and we represent um, survivors of child abuse and vulnerable adult abuse. We represent people up and down the country. We're approached um, by people from Scotland, from abroad. Um, many of them, we, um, as um, Lisa has said, um, uh, you know, a, a real um, and um, growing and underlying sense of trauma um, as a result of what's happened to them. We um, have, we have a long connection with Islington. My um, colleague Fran Swain represented um, a number of survivors of the Islington child abuse scandal. Now this was 10 or more years ago, um, but we felt then and continue to feel that a great injustice was done in Islington. Um, that records of care leavers were lost or sanitised and that people were never brought to justice. And this has allowed Margaret Hodge um, to say that there were no convictions and no proof of an organised rape, hmm. although um, the evidence indicates to the contrary. We um, would like to help with attaining some recognition for uh, this appalling injustice. Um, we are assisting a number of individuals now who, who haven't attained um, um, recognition or address or haven't been in a position or have been too traumatised um, to come forward um, before. Um, we are um, wanting to, to, to bring together a map really um, of individual experiences to show the gross negligence of the, the council um, and to, to, to gain um, um, accountability for that. Um, we are also interested in using the state obligations under human rights law to compel, as that statement from Peter McKelvey was read out, said, a proper investigation at last into what happened in Islington. Uh, because uh, you know the, the report that's been referred to as the whitewash report, you know, it's, it's felt by, by many, many people really didn't get to the underlying issues of what happened with the council and the local police. Um, and we want to, to, to really see if we can um, compel that investigation um, to find out really what, you know, the, those people who were in the confidential annex of the report, where are they now? Were the right people named? Some of them um, were not. Um, and really to try and find out those people who um, intentionally or recklessly um, ignores or, or facilitated perpetrators of abuse. We, we fear that some of them still remain working in high up social work positions or with access to children and really we want to compel a proper investigation so that those people who are hidden underneath rocks for so long can at last be made accountable. We really want to use yes. the law as a legal tool really to, to help them. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is why Cameron wants to strap the human rights illustration. <laughs> Ali mentioned the, the human rights. I mean, be aware that at the moment we're, we have at least one political party who is dedicated to stripping away your human rights. And I think we should think very carefully when we cast our vote next year about what that may mean. Yeah. <laughs> um, so before anybody else wants to speak, if you do want to speak, like I say, you don't have to speak.
a name or whatever. I'm going to introduce the locuist. Somebody who's got promises to him. Hello, my name's Ian Pace. I've I've just been involved as a campaigner and researcher and it's just for roughly about the last 18 months. Um, lots of people have talk, talked in some detail about uh, precisely what has gone on and what was covered up here in Islington. I want to talk a bit more generally about some of the implications coming out of this. Uh, I first got involved in this uh, in the context, uh, many of you will know about the trial of uh, Michael Brewer, the director of music at Cheatham School. Uh, Can you speak last up, year. please, Ian, a little bit louder? Uh, so I got involved uh, coming out of the trial of Michael Brewer, uh, the director of music at Cheatham School, my old school, and in the knowledge that there was a much, much wider range of abuse going on there and in all of the other specialist music schools in the country. And I look at that, I look at what went on at the top public schools, and then I look at what uh, is known to have gone on here throughout the children's homes in Islington, uh, what's gone on in Rotherham, in Rochdale, in Jersey, uh, in Suffolk. I, the names, I don't need to go through them all, there's so many, it's just quite staggering. And it clarifies to me, above all, one thing, that this can happen at all levels of society. And to suggest that somehow any form of abuse is more or less important because of which class uh, either perpetrator or victim comes from, or for that matter, uh, to, to do with ethnic group or sexuality or gender or anything else, I think is absolutely crass. We are dealing with uh, people who have abused and people who have been abused and people who have facilitated and people who have covered up. And in every case, we're talking about specific cases, not about either demonizing or glorifying any any particular group in society. Some of you will have read today the report uh, by Guy Adams in the Mail about Greville Ghana and uh, some of the information that informed that comes from a very far-right and very anti-Semitic source and there are certainly people who want to exploit this issue in that way. I think we should have absolutely no time with that agenda. It's about these individuals and what they did. Uh, it's, it's completely wrong to say that uh, that, that, that they are any less uh, ready to be investigated because, uh, for example, they've done uh, important work with the Holocaust Educational Trust. But on the same hand, on the other hand, it's equally bad to say that one can draw any implications of other people who just happen to have been born to the same ethnic group on that. And I think that's a factor that's easily forgotten. And I think the whole issue is easily hijacked towards such agendas. I've, as I say, I've just been involved in researching and campaigning for about 18 months uh, and I'm absolutely staggered uh, to see the incredible work that people have been doing for, for decades now, above all uh, through the work that the NIRS has done since our incredibly brave work in exposing what was going on here in Islington. It's what Peter McKelvey was doing and in both cases persisted with over all this time when many have not wanted to listen, when the press have not wanted to report until quite recently. Uh, what Eileen uh, has done, and she worked with Liz to bring this uh, to the public eye, and what many others. And then, more recently, it's heartening to see a whole group of people, some who want to be public, some who less, want to be less public, who have pooled their resources, uh, and I think actually moved uh, knowledge of the range and nature of systematic and organised abuse on very much. Uh, in this context, I'd mention someone who I know wants to always wants to remain anonymous, and you might know him as Moran, as Moran Buxtansinger, named after a cartoon character. And uh, the range of resources he's put together on his blog Spotlight is just incredible. It's, it's a resource that anyone looking at this needs to do. Uh, I'd also like to point out to Charlotte over there, Charlotte Russell, who's been on her own bits of books blog, been doing a uh, similar thing. Um, and, and then journalists like Andrew Norfolk at the Times, about the grooming gangs in the north and also about abuse in the public schools. Like Helen Pitt of The Guardian, who has done immense work on abuse in the musical world, and also Paul Gallagher, The Independent, like Guy Adams and, Mike, and Martin Beckford at The Mail, and so on and so forth. Um, just to say one last point out of this. Uh, here in Islington, uh, there's very clear evidence of systematic abuse. Uh, at the time when Margaret Hodge, who later of course we know went on to be children's minister, was head of the council. 
Now we're familiar, many of us are familiar with all the major allegations surrounding prominent Conservative figures like uh, Peter Morrison, like uh, Nicholas Fairburn, like the claims about Sir Rhodes Boyson, whose school was just o over there, like uh, like the claims about the dossier presented by Geoffrey Dickens and uh, where that might have gone to, or the Brooklyn mm. dossiers, uh, plural as it should be put. Uh, but I think uh, it's absolutely vital now that the leadership, that all the leading figures in the Labour Party also need to indicate their willingness and their honesty to, to show that uh, they don't think that their own party is in any sense immune and, and just at least acknowledge the possibility that many senior figures uh, there have been involved in facilitating and helping things up. You all know about things like uh, the involvement of the, deputy, the current deputy leader with the Peter Parliament Information Exchange, at least in a facilitatory view, and uh, we uh, other stories like uh, about the allegations about George Thomas, uh, by Tony Pandy, about uh, about Jana, about terrible abuse in Lambeth, about Operation Orr, and about facilitating things like Peter Wrighton. And we need absolute commitment and absolute honesty from all politicians, from all parties, if we're going to get to the bottom of this. Don't so need to give that honesty, don't give them your vote. Okay, so I know that we've got food, and we've got further with the back of the city, and anybody else wants to say anything, but yeah. Right, so can we just listen to Luke? Right, so we're going to listen to Luke, who is. No, I'm from no, Suffolk uh, originally, so yeah, um, I'm not going to touch on it too much. Um, Sorry, can we listen? Sorry, quite, quite important for everyone to know. Um, when I made, when I first made a disclosure to uh, social services where I live and to the police where I live, um, I discovered uh, afterwards that they had a huge um, uh, multi-agency protection meeting. In this meeting, they falsely declared me as suffering from uh, a delusional, paranoid mental health disorder. I'm quite a bright guy. I, when I found out, and I have a lot of friends within the health service who told me about this, when I found out, I went through the motions and I went for an assessment with a uh, forensic psychiatrist in the county where I live. This assessment said, Miss, uh, about me, said he has no history of mental health issues isn't suffering from mental health issues but very clearly he is a victim of uh, historical sexual abuse that was last year i proved i'm not making anything up i've made a full statement to a force outside the county where i live uh, on interview i'm still waiting for an apology from the police and from social services for falsely declaring me as mentally ill i'm aware of at least six other people who have currently been sectioned under the Mental Health Act. This is something they tried with me. I did a Data Protection Act request for my for the police records about my disclosure, having kept all the event numbers and I kept some very detailed records. On this, on these particular records, although there was an awful lot of redactions, it very clearly states after I've had a forensic psychiatrist declare me as not being mentally ill whatsoever, a Suff Suffolk police say this man clearly has mental health issues but not enough to section. They are very, the authorities, not just here in Islington, but all over the country, and let me tell you, I was brought here to Islington from Suffolk, and I know a lot of people here, and I can't say any more because that's um, the subject of a criminal investigation, but the authorities everywhere will use the Mental Health Act against you all. Yes, I know. You're, you're not oh, yeah. alone, yeah, <laughs> keep fighting. You know, NAPAC know who I am. Liz Davies knows who I am. Anyone, anyone needs any advice, go through them and I will help you. You're not alone, but I'll tell you something. I wasn't mentally ill when it started, but my God, I went through yeah. some stress and I didn't feel too good afterwards, you know? Um, I'm gonna throw in as well, I'm a proud father. My baby is three months old. Thank you very much, everybody. Stanley, pictures are available. <laughs> After making a disclosure, I had suffered, this, and don't forget this is after I've been declared as not suffering from any, any mental illness, I had suffered police contact social services to say I'm dangerously mentally ill and a danger to my wife and the unborn baby. We had to go through the, oh, it was an ordeal, we had two assessments from social services, they, they came round and they were actually, do you know what, they did their job, yeah, because if they have a, a, a referral from a detective sergeant in a child abuse investigation unit who says someone's a danger they've got to follow up 
but that's what they're doing. They are desperate to stop us speaking out, and they were desperate for me not to make contact with everybody here today because they know, they know I can firm up an awful lot, and I have done. I've given an awful lot of information to some very, very important people who can now start joining up the dots. We are not alone, but that's what we're facing, and we can't face it alone. We've got to start banding together yes. and doing something. They're using the Mental Health Act, and they're now, they're, they're, they know what they're doing. They're part of the establishment, and they are the authorities. It's got to be stopped. Yeah. Don't know how, but we need to stick together. Yeah. All right? Well, my name's Chris. I'm a survivor of abuse, but not from um, a home like this, within the home, okay? I'm also a campaigner for abuse, but um, healthy, to get people back to their health. Because, as we know, if you've abused, you do um, go through some mental issues, as well as some physical issues, and the way you react to your abuse, you can either react in a positive or a negative way, and it can be more damaging for you. So I actually help people overcome their trauma in healthier ways. But what I want to say to you today, guys, is that we do, I have got a campaign going, and I need 100,000 signatures to make government listen to us. We need the mandatory reporting so that we can protect the whistleblowers, okay? We need education in schools so our children going forward know what abuse is and what abuse isn't, so that they can then go to a person to get help if they are being abused in the home. We need stiffer penalties for the perpetrators of abuse. We don't want to let them get away with getting these piggly sentences, okay? They need to be um, penalised what they've done to us, okay? And we also need proper investment into child abuse so that the police can do their job, can cut the red tape and allow the police to actually um, catch these perpetrators and put them away behind bars where they belong, okay? Yes. So we need to overhaul the whole system of abuse. It needs to be properly recognised and properly funded. And you know, we've all, everybody here, we're either a survivor or we are um, a supporter. And we do need to come together. More of these vigils need to happen. And we need to get bigger in numbers and we need to make people understand that we are not going to be put down and we are not going to be made to shut up because we've already been for a lifetime of being made to be shut up, being made to keep everything secret and it's time now for us to rise up and speak about what we've been through and that we're not going to allow the future generation to go through this and you know I have I've cried most of this week because of what's been on TV and I don't want to cry anymore I want action yes. I really yeah, want action, action. Yeah. and it's about time that we want people to listen to us you know Pete Napak does a fantastic job People here, we all do a fantastic job, but on our own, we're weak. Yeah. Together, we're strong, yeah. and that's what we need to push forward. Excellent. Wow. Wow. Whether it's survivors or just people in our community, we've all got to come together. I, yeah, I couldn't have said it better myself, I'm sure no one could. Um, but I've got Felicity Dowling from Left Unity who's going to speak, and then if anybody else wants to say a few words, Briefly. You've all been troopers today, by the way. This yeah. other, but if anybody just raise your hands. Right. So. I'm Felicity Dowling. I'm from Left Unity. I've come down today from Liverpool. I think that this is a really, really important campaign, and this is the start. We have to see it that this is the beginning. The chief exec of Liverpool City Council was chief exec in Rotherham. He's still in place in Liverpool. Why? Weeks later, he's still there. Now, we have to say that we're not just interested in the history, as other people have said so far. We have to keep today's children safe and the children of the future safe. We have to realise that cuts mean cuts to kids, and it's the children who are suffering desperately in austerity. They've just decided that the economy of this country is actually bigger than they thought it was, because now they're taking into account the prostitution as part of the economy. And believe you me, they want that as part of the economy, and that is part of why they don't want investigations like this.
They don't want it seen to be. The children today are at risk. It's not historical. Children today are at risk. That's actually, I would speaking so Everyone, go on, what we done? Well, no, I was just going to say that I think um, not being a survivor myself, but coming and having family and friends who are survivors, I just really wanted to say a huge thank you to the survivors who come forward because I know they are doing it for my children yes. and, the ch and everyone else's children and that's what makes me so grateful to them for speaking out like this and I know how I, well I don't know how difficult it is, that's the reality, I don't know and I am just very very grateful for their courage and their bravery that takes us through and they bring us with them, they take us with them and everywhere they go and everywhere this happens it will sow seeds of courage and people will rise up and start talking and this is happening. Now. Thank you. Can I say one final thing? That wherever you are, in whatever campaign you're involved in, make sure this is brought up. Because we're not yet a big enough campaign on our own. If you go on a big demonstration, I'm going to come down to London for the TUC demonstration. Yeah, there's one of When we come to the TUC demonstration, take a white balloon with you it's all you've got to do we'll get the white yeah, yeah. balloons yeah. recognized yeah, 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 yeah. use the white balloons they're free they're cheap <laughs> you can use them you can get them out let's make this a national campaign we expose the establishment a better world is possible and we've got to fight for it Thank you. i think that's really important about the places that we go because we can come to places like this and we can have a vigil and we can talk but in our day-to-day -day yeah. lives this issue has to be raised yeah. it has to be raised we have to it has to permeate our lives because it's permeated the lives of so many people i know there's a couple of people want to speak but first of all there's a poem oh, that... end on this oh you want to end on that okay really. all right then who was can can hold on there's somebody can... Wait. Yeah, yeah, you... hi um, i'm mary from empowerment mondays uh, we've been going for over a year now. Sorry? Oh well, I'm an independent, I'm Mary. I attend a thing every Monday. Uh, basically, um, we've been outside Islington Council offices. We had written in the pavements there about the abuse in Islington. And when the police came and said to us, if you're making accusations like this, you should come to us first of all. Our um, call, Grant, <laughs> uh, call Grant basically said, well, we did come to you with Jimmy Savile. Um, <laughs> what we do is, we go outside the Royal Courts and we, we're demonstrating about institutionalised uh, child rape, as is put on here. Just a couple of minutes. Yeah, sure, sure. sure. Um, but we're trying to take it to another level. Obviously, the whistleblower Melanie Shaw is in Peterborough Prison right now. Disgraceful. I think that's a separate issue from today. Today yes. we're here for the Islington survivors from this building. And, and we made that very that clear there. to no, everybody. I, just, I, just I know, but, but I think we should what, stick to what we're here for today. Can I just, just, just say yeah. just yes, one thing? Yes, please. Please. And it's, it's from... Um, yeah. um, Gotten to say, but basically, even if you have got a mental health problem and you're a survivor of abuse, come forward anyway because you're going to be believed by us, you know, more than anything. You're going to be believed by a lot of people who know that all 12 homes in Islington there was child abuse taking place. And the main thing is, is that more than anything, we've got to try and stop Margaret Hodge from standing as mayor. She announced that yeah. she's going to stand as mayor this week, all right? She's, and and it, that cannot happen. And I think one thing that got to come from this as well, that we have an online petition to make sure that that doesn't happen, yeah. where we can explain exactly what's going on um, in Islington <laughs> and how she did not protect children and how she basically impaired any sort of um, inquiry going on. And I do think that needs to go up. It's really, really quick. Yes, no remorse. Yeah. Yeah. No remorse. No remorse. And absolute arrogance yes. as well. And, and so arrogance. And, and also the arrogance yeah. to actually, she, she actually um, deemed Demetrius Panton as a liar. Again, this is what happens when you report 
any sort of abuse as well. She actually deemed him he's a as a, 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 he's a survivor, he's a survivor of um, from Islington of abuse, and she deemed him of having mental health. He's a very disturbed man, is what she said to try and to try and ridicule him and to try and rubbish his testimony. Testimony, and we've got to remind her of that. We've got to make sure that that's reminded. So I think. What will happen is that after this as well, we get an online petition up on the um, on the website and it goes round and viral and, and every single trade union member as well. If you're in a trade union, get people, take it up in your trade unions, put resolutions forward to um, conferences and make sure this is taken up. Thank you. <laughs> So whether you're, in a, whether, you're in a, whether you're in a trade union, whether you're part of a community organisation, yep. please get these sort of organisations to take this up. I really agree with the online petition. Um, I really agree that we've just got to get this ball rolling. And these vigils, the white balloon, the symbolism of it, let's, let's get them. I mean, Hackney's just around the corner, I'm from Hackney. Hackney, we know the history of Hackney. So you want to say something very can, can, I just, can I just add one thing? To, to what Leslie said, I think we should also take up the demand in Phil's letter yep. for a specific inquiry into what happened in his meeting. I think we should make that part of the petition. Yes. That All right, okay. And so, so, yeah. so let's all sort of come together and we'll draft yeah. that petition yeah. and get it online. Yeah. 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 Okay, you're going to. So, okay, well, just, just to kind of uh, wind things up then. Just I think, yeah. up. Yeah. I've actually got a poem here from an abuse survivor from Jersey Children's Homes, which he has actually given us permission to read. Um, it's called You. You took away my freedom when I was just a child. Then wonder why I'm like the, inno uh, like the innocent from, sorry. Then wonder why I'm like I am from innocent to wild. You took away my sanity and you left me friend alone. You took away my childhood and left me without a home. It is what you wanted. Clap your hands, you have achieved of destruction of a young man's mind who was never believed. It's hard for those who suffered at the hands of those who hide, who denounce responsibility to the police, they all have lied. Now we are the ones who control our destiny. We're stronger, older, smarter. You were wrong to damage me, James. And we know that this yeah, isn't finishing, this is the start no, of something. And we're all going to go out and do yeah. what we can. But does anybody else want to say anything even briefly? Yeah. No? Yeah. No? Yeah. Okay, let's just take some time to reflect. Do you want to wrap things up? I just up? want yeah. to say, please email us on whiteflowersvigil at yahoo.com. You know, let's get that, you know, yeah. email around for yeah. anyone who wants to, who has information about this building, about the people who worked in it, about the survivors. Of who lived in it as children and uh, this is just a focus for today yeah. but if you anything about any of the other Islington homes of course we'd be most interested and we would arrange to meet you and talk with you and see where we can take to help you from that point. Right, thank you, thank you. I think we'd also just echo what Ali asked the solicitor because obviously clearly they're acting for survivors in Islington mm -hmm. and they would really like to hear also um, so that they can, if, if survivors want to have their cases taken up, and it would also help us be pushing for an inquiry just in the sense of itself. I think one of the key things is we need to stay in touch, so I hope that somebody has got a list of you, so we can have emails. Okay, we better sort that before what, people what, go. What, well, why don't, don't people who aren't currently on the list email yeah. White Blue and Z? If you could do that, then we can all keep in touch and let you know about you. Vigil at yahoo.com. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. White Flowers Vigil at yahoo.com. Please just make sure that we've got your contact details. And thank you. And thank you all for coming today and sparing this. Thank you. All right, they didn't get any coffee. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Nick knows. Nick knows. It's a much bigger turnout than the last one at Elm Desk House. Word is getting around. This is important. We must not let these evil monsters get away with what they have done to so many children's lives. They think they can get away. They're going to have to be disappointed. We have the press here, which is a great improvement.
got the police watching over us. Getting rather wet. Lots of white flowers. Lots of white balloons. Placing the white flowers on the doorstep. Bill Frampton. Is there a Bill Frampton? Phil's not here. Phil's not here, no. There's something here. Man, he's got his name to him. Yeah, Phil. I'll come inside of this. Andrew, there's a young man. There's a bunch of them. What are you saying? Where's Phil? Which is his Right, I think it's winding up here, so uh, thank you very much everyone for watching. Please spread the word, get people to watch the replay of this, it's extremely important that we get thousands watching this. The uh, speeches at the previous video at uh, the Elm site of the Elm Guest House has now uh, topped a thousand views. We want this to go much higher than that. Please get people to watch this. They cannot stick their head in the sand that this hasn't been happening. It has been happening. The people that have done it must be brought to justice. They cannot run anymore. Thank you.